What's up guys, Stefan Ciancio, the action taking blogger here, and in this video I have an awesome treat for you. I'm going to be interviewing a guy named Paul James, who you may or may not have seen before. He's kind of getting huge right now all over the net in the internet marketing scene. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel that has recently smashed past 100,000 subscribers. Um, he's one of the most honest uh, you know, marketers that I know, very humble, great guy. I've had the pleasure of meeting him before at a convention and uh, you know, I decided I wanted to get in touch with him and just kind of get a feel for how he's been crushing it and, and really see if he can pass down some information to you as a loyal action taking subscriber here. Um, and you know just where the state of the market is where he sees it going and you know we had a really really great talk so um, before we get into it I'll just say uh, if you want to join in the action taker tribe here you know we're going for 10,000 subscribers minimum that's the goal so go ahead and smash the like button on this video smash the subscribe button and hit the little notification for the bell to make sure you get notified of future videos and if you have any comments after the interview please comment under the video I'd love to hear from you uh, additionally before we get into it you could find Paul at his channel at I am Paul James that's his uh, YouTube tag and you can be able to subscribe for him definitely subscribe to him as well he's got great content you can find his website at www.pauljames.com all right I'm gonna get into it here's me and Paul up everyone Stefan Ciancio the action taking blogger here and in this video I actually have something really special I have uh, mr. Paul James you might have seen him around YouTube or around the net he's an internet marketer that's been absolutely crushing it lately becoming a huge influencer and just uh, really killing it with his online business living the whole digital marketing online marketing dream so I had to get him on here for you guys to talk to him and see you know a little bit of insight on what he's doing and how he's crushing it and maybe drop some wisdom on us for uh, what we can be doing better. So Paul, thanks so much for being on with us today. Really happy to have you. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yeah, I mean, uh, it means a ton. So, uh, you know, me and Paul actually have, uh, for everyone watching, me and Paul have actually met before at a convention. And, uh, you know, we've been pretty good friends over the past few years. And it's it's been great to kind of watch his journey from my end. And, you know, we've, we've both been marketers for years, and we've kind of done different things. And it's just kind of cool to see what other people are doing. And, you know, I'm sure you agree, just to see what everyone's up to. And, and yeah, kind of get a feel for, for what's working and what's not. So um, basically, you've become this, this big YouTube influencer. I mean, congratulations. I saw you recently passed you. over 100,000 subscribers. I mean, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, you know, yeah really exciting feel? monument. <laughs> yeah. Um, did, did it feel good? Was it like, you know, like, was it a big, big day for you? Or? Yeah, definitely. It was something I dreamed of doing for a while. Like, I mean, even, even kind of before I got into like really heavily into like launching products and marketing and local marketing, like I was like, liked video and thought it would be really cool to like, just kind of get on YouTube. And I saw other big YouTubers, like not in our world, you know, but like in different spaces, doing really cool things on YouTube and getting like really big and hitting 100,000 subscribers. And I just thought like, it would be really cool to one day be able to do that. So to be able to do it in like an industry I'm so passionate about was a really cool accomplishment. Yeah, I would say so that yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And it's actually cool, because I feel like in our space, there actually are uh, now starting to become more people in our space coming to YouTube. I see, you know, like Alex Becker, Dan Brock, the Deadbeat Super Affiliate, and yeah. I see all these other people. And it's just kind of cool to see that kind of come into the YouTube space, you know, over the last few years, especially. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I started uploading my videos there just as a way to host them because, you know, I was doing um, updates for my courses and people would say, oh, the flash player is not working and just stuff like that. And I really just wanted a reliable place where I, I know everyone could view YouTube. So I would yeah. just start posting my videos there. So I was on the platform for a long time, but I just really didn't really pursue it as a place to grow an audience until, like you said, I saw Alex Becker doing it and Dan Brock, the Deadbeat Super Affiliate is also another one who started, I think he started like right before me. And when I saw you know, some of the momentum he was gaining, I was like, you know, I should be doing this too. So I started mm -hmm. to really kind of revisit the idea of, and at that point I, I had a okay audience built up on it just kind of naturally from not doing really anything, just putting my videos there. I thought, right. you know, I could, I could get this to take off pretty quickly. I think if I focused on it. Yeah. And uh, you've definitely shown that that's very possible. You've absolutely killed it. So um, uh, I guess it, it, when it comes to that, is there any uh, words of wisdom you have around like what it takes to grow a big channel in, in, in your niche and, and what it does for you as an influencer and, and that kind of stuff? Yeah. You know, one of the things I realized early on was I was, I was starting to spend time on videos and content, you know, like editing them, making them look good, trying to make them entertaining. 
but then I would upload them without really putting much thought into like what I'm going to name the title of my video or what I'm going to have my thumbnail be. And I started to realize that if I'm not going to take the time to put up a decent thumbnail, like a thumbnail that's going to get attention, I may as well not even upload the video. Like it's literally that important. It's literally just as important as the actual content of the video. So that was something I learned like really early on, you know, think about your title. It's almost like an email. Like for those of you guys who do email marketing out there, like if no one opens your email, then what good is it? And that's kind of what the thumbnail and title does for your video. It's the same concept. Hmm. And very interesting. So it's, it's just kind of important to really make sure people know, like before they even click, you want to make sure that you're enticing as many people as possible to actually click on your video. Yeah. And, and I think like a lot of the stuff like you do in the blogging world can be very, very um, helpful and transfer over because you're using very similar, like I know you do a lot of stuff with like uh, BuzzSumo, I think the platform is where you kind of reverse engineer and analyze the viral topics. Like that kind of stuff works really well on YouTube too. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, one thing I've been doing actually is I have, uh, I, now that I've been really building up the action taking blogger channel, I've been, uh, basically creating videos and I've been doing, you know, I've used a vid IQ as a, do, is that, do you use any software of any sort? Yeah. I use the same one actually. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. So I've been using that and it's helped a lot with just kind of figuring out like uh, titles and tags and things like that. Yeah. What I'm doing now is since I figure that on Google, it's probably somewhat similar in terms of what people search for. I actually am now creating my blog posts based on my videos. So I have the video, let me take that content and be able to repurpose it. So I'm recycling content rather than having to always create new blog posts. So yeah, if that's I a good idea. It, yeah, and it's, I actually have a virtual assistant helping me with transcribing that and then I do the final editing on the blog post, but it's been, it's been saving me a ton of time because if I create a video, I wanna leverage that content in as many places as possible. Nice. So um, that's something that's been, been really helpful for me. Um, yeah. So, Traditionally, you've come from the space of, of uh, affiliate marketing and selling your own products and building email lists. How would you say that your YouTube channel has impacted your core business when it comes to, you know, the, the amazing growth that you've had? Yeah, you know, I got sick of the grind of constantly having to launch new products. And it wasn't good for me as a, as a person because I, it didn't feel fulfilling for me to constantly be chasing affiliates and asking them to promote and feeling expected to promote by other people because you owe favors on stuff you really don't want to promote sometimes. And, um, you know, just feeling bad saying, no, no, I'm not promoting it. So it, it really helped me as a person to be able to focus on one flagship product. And that's really what YouTube did for me was it allowed me to take all of my energy, put it into my flagship product and really focus on getting customers results with that one product. Because now that I'm not hitting them with, you know, this product, that product, this product every single week, I can take the time and really, you know, help you mold them into what I want them to be with that one product. And they're not having like this shiny object syndrome anymore where I'm constantly saying, okay, now after three days, this is the next latest and greatest product. And yeah. I always tried not to do that anyways, but I mean, still it was, it was one of those things where it just, I know a lot of marketers get stuck in that grind of where they're constantly having to do that. And um, YouTube kind of allows you to step out of that. And it's just better all the way around for, for you because you, it's just more fulfilling and you're not um, constantly slaving over creating new products and for the customer, because they're able to focus down and really believe in what you're talking about. And um, they have more trust built up in you because of it too. Right. Right. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And I, I think a lot of people are kind of scared at the idea because what you're doing is you're building a real evergreen business. If you really mm -hmm. think about it, what you're doing is the right way of building a business, a sustainable long-term business. You have a core business and then you get traffic to it. It's really that simple. And I think everyone overcomplicates it and launches so many products and they're worried that their product's not gonna be hot. If uh, it, you know it's two weeks old, they think it's dead. And I, I think it's because people are so scared to kind of go out and test different traffic methods and see what could work. And you've clearly proven that the evergreen route can absolutely work. And it's something that if you really work on, eventually it's actually gonna be way better than constantly having to do the grind like you said. Yeah. Like, you know, like you have passive traffic coming in every month, I'm sure passive leads, passive traffic. And it's like you, your hard work doesn't just die out after a week, you know, like it keeps building and growing for you, which I think is really, really cool. Yeah. And I think vendors have good intentions. Don't get me wrong. Like I oh, think yeah. I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that to bash anyone at all. Like, no. I think it's fine to launch products and do that. I just think like customers will trust you way more when you're constantly talking about the same thing. 
and overall it's just a better ecosystem and that's not to say like you can't still promote products and you can't still do other things because i still do i still do you know i still do product from i mean i did one with you with pinterest for example yeah and um if it's a good fit and it fits what you're talking about at the time and it's helpful it's going to do really well you know people are going to be really happy for it and we've had a lot of happy customers on the joint venture we did with that so you know it's just it's just having a good balance really and um i think that's really what it's all about yeah i totally agree and you know as a vendor myself it's like you know um i don't think it's a bad intention thing i think it's honestly for a lot of vendors it's a fear thing it's like mm-hmm. i feel like my product isn't you know isn't something that I know how to drive traffic to evergreen so i'm going to just launch new products every month i don't think it's like a, a good or bad it's more of like a fear of going into the unknown you know yeah so um you know i think you are really truly um what's the word uh someone who like oh, a pioneer you know you're really like a pioneer of like the youtube space for art for the digital marketing internet marketing create your own business type niche i think because there really isn't that there's there's people doing it but there's not that many people doing it yeah it's still relatively new yeah, it was interesting too you know when i started the whole journey i didn't start it as like like i i thought my income might take a hit like i definitely you know i was abandoning a lot of other things my local marketing business, you know, starting to not take on any more clients, just kind of leveraging the existing ones I had and working with them and then turning away other people just because I needed to have the time to focus on making YouTube videos and content. And I couldn't make any more courses. I had to just stick with what I had. So I went into it thinking my income might take a hit, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to spend the next year focused on building my influence. And that was really my main goal. Like, I figured if I could build my influence, the income will eventually follow. Luckily enough, my income didn't take a hit at all. It actually went up in the process and very quickly too, because I found out that even even at the beginning, if I wasn't acquiring new customers, the same customers that I already had were starting to build up trust. So it was almost as if I was increasing leads, but really just the same leads I already had started to trust me more and more and more and more because I wasn't pushing new stuff. I was just pushing the same thing I already had. And it just took that rapport and trust building over time to really get them confident enough in me and in themselves to buy and and pursue it. Right. Yeah, I I totally see that. And it kind of makes sense, right? You know, everyone's always said content is king, but when you really do put out consistent content, it really does just build that trust. And everyone's like, wow, this guy's really serious. He's been around for so long, putting out all these free videos. I trust him. You know, mm-hmm. he's not like some fly by night, like put out one product and then disappears or something like that. You know, it's a totally different thing. So yeah. that's, that's great. Um, so I guess my question is uh, where well, I have a few more questions, but um, so I guess like we talked about traffic. So would you say that you primarily now focus on free traffic into your business, into your, into your, your um, products and all that? Like now from YouTube, is that like one of your main focuses? It's definitely my main focus, but I also do paid traffic as well, which is something kind of on the side of YouTube. Um, So I have basically two main funnels, one that comes from the paid traffic and then one that goes from the YouTube traffic. It's essentially the same funnel, but set up on two different um, buy buttons and two different uh, funnels entirely, but it's a clone of each other. So the paid traffic flows in the same way uh, to an automated webinar is how I set it up. Um, So I'm making really good ROI on that, like 30 to 40%. And then, yeah. And then on the YouTube side of things, I absolutely crushing it with that as well. And that's all free, which is really cool. Um, But it's kind of nice because they both work with each other. You know, people who come to my webinars are going to check me out on YouTube and people on YouTube, they might see my ad later and they already know who I am. So that influence definitely helps. And I've also built a really, you know, millions of people in my remarketing list. So I can go on, on YouTube and do ads and they already know who I am. They've already watched my video before. So even if they didn't buy off of the free traffic, now I'm targeting them extremely cheap off of the remarketing. Wow. So it's really like you mentioned the ecosystem. You really have now an ecosystem that works for you in a sense that all these different components, no matter where someone comes in from, you can always hit them and they're going to know who you are, just like you said. So your, your sphere of influence is growing. And then no matter where they come in from, they're, they're kind of in the ecosystem once they're in, which is really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, they all work with one another. You can leverage them together. So very cool. That's, that's phenomenal. So um, I guess my question now is as a newbie, because I'm sure we have a lot of newbies watching, you know, someone who's just getting started, what would be your advice when it comes to building up traffic source to maybe do affiliate marketing? Would you recommend going the influencer route and doing YouTube? Is there, you know, something else you would recommend for someone that's just kind of just starting out? 
the influencer route, in my opinion, is the only way to go moving forward because I, I just see like, I mean, just look at like the celebrities like Kylie Jenner, like purely built the business off of pure influence. Like it's yeah. insane just because she's famous. <laughs> so, I mean, you can really sell anything at that point. You look at Ty Lopez, he can yeah. sell pretty much anything he wants. He's got a book company. He's got um, I think he even sells like t-shirts or something now, but um, it's really insane. I mean, when you become an influencer, people buy from you because it's you and you stand behind the product or the brand. Yeah. And I, I think that that is a really smart business model. Um, it's personal branding. But um, I would say as far as the platform goes, you don't necessarily have to do YouTube. I mean, you can do anything, Instagram, Pinterest, blogging. Um, anything. It's just being consistent with it. And I would say stick with one or two of them and really hit it hard because if you disperse your focus too much, then you're probably going to get mediocre results with all of them. So my primary focus was YouTube and I just, I just stuck with that. But if you want to make your primary focus blogging, then that's cool. Just stick with it. Or if you want to make it Instagram, that's cool. Just stick with that and constantly do it. So um, maybe once you dominate one, then kind of move over to the next. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. So I'm kind of migrating over to some of the other platforms as well now that I've kind of figured out the YouTube stuff. Awesome. Okay. So basically it's just about kind of, so would you say that like as a newbie who might not necessarily have confidence being an influencer, what would you say, um, what would you say to that? Like, you know, like I, there's a whole thing. You don't need to be an expert to start putting out videos that help people. Would you say mm -hmm. it's, it's more of approaching it from that angle of uh, just looking for anything that's kind of something you feel confident on or? Yeah, I remember Pat Flynn, and that's, I don't know if maybe that's what you're thinking of when you say that, but Pat Flynn said something like, um, people are really interested in seeing the journey that someone goes through, like maybe that you create a blog about you want to become a millionaire and this is my journey of trying to get there. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like there's something that intrigues people in taking that journey with you or seeing someone else complete that journey. So yeah, you definitely don't have to be an expert at something in order to share your journey. It's fine. Just be honest with people and tell them where you're at and what it is you're doing. And the big thing is, is to be entertaining. You know, you have to stick out from everyone else out there and people come to these social media platforms. They don't most of the time come there to learn. They come there to be entertained. So if you can do both at the same time, you're going to be light years ahead of everyone else. That's what's going to allow you to grow. And it takes practice. I mean, you're not going to, if you're going to do YouTube, for example, you're not going to shoot your first video and be like, you know, I'm a God. <laughs> it's, it's going to be something where it's like, okay, that one sucked, but next time I'll do a little bit better. And then the next time I'll do a little bit better. And you know, even now I'm still learning new things and new things that work and what doesn't work. And I'm tweaking and making, you know, tweaks along the way to make it better and more entertaining and more fun to watch. And right. you just constantly learn and, you know, even if you're like with YouTube, for example, a lot of people tell me I can't do YouTube because I don't have a nice camera, you know, shoot it on your iPhone. Like we have, <laughs> we have HD devices in the palm of our hands. Like there's really no excuse anymore. It's just get started and be consistent, come up with a schedule and stick to it. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I know people that have started with just a laptop and a mic and, and a, they're in, they're in laptop microphone, you know, like a, a low quality webcam built into their laptop and a low quality microphone built into their laptop. And that's, you know, start there, you know, it's yeah. less, I think it's less about like, obviously over time you can improve your quality, but I think just getting out there and, and delivering your message is going to be the most uh, important piece, regardless of all the quality stuff that you can add later. You know? Yeah. And even when you start to scale up later and you start to add like these, you know, 4k cameras and stuff, it becomes another barrier to actually getting the video done because it becomes harder to make it and you become less motivated to make it because it was easier before. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely pluses and minuses of both. Yeah. I mean, I think there's one guy I followed uh, recently, uh, Tyler Pratt, and I feel like every video is just him uh, with, with his laptop and he's got like, a sure. little, little webcam and I think he's got like 80,000 subscribers. So you don't yeah. have, to have like the quality stuff is great. And if you strive for quality, more power, and I, it's eventually the route I'm going to go as well. But mm -hmm. even if you don't want to do the extra bells and whistles, you could still have huge success keeping it simple. You know? Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of videos where I just don't have the time to set up the camera, but I have a great idea. I want to get out and I, I shoot on this web webcam. Right. Uh, Paul, that I we're talking on right now, which is just a Logitech webcam and my uh, Blue Yeti mi microphone. And sometimes even these, <laughs> you know, if I have to, 
you. You still there? It looks like I lost you. I can sort of hear you. Hello? Oh, there you are. Yeah, uh, I think okay. we're okay now. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, okay. I think I'm okay. Okay. We're okay. Um, so, uh, sorry, the last part you were saying was about something with your headphones. Or your, your oh, yeah. So I was saying, even if like I'm traveling in Florida, I'm bringing my laptop and I might just shoot a video using the microphone on my, you know, Apple headphones. Right. So, yeah, it's really like whatever you have available to you at the time, tell the story that you're going to tell because the story at the end of the day is going to be what sells it. And it's going to be the entertainment value of it. And yeah. Everything else is just a tool to tell that story. Yeah, I kind of look at it like 95.5, like 95% is the, co the content and the 5% the is the, the polishing of the content. At least that's how I look at it. Like you want to yeah. be 100% as often, but if you can only go 95%, then just make sure you go 95%. Yeah, it's better to get something out than to break your schedule and not do it at all. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So, um, okay, so how has having like, you know, you have your YouTube channel, but obviously, you know, you have a site as well. You have a blog. So how has having that centralized place where people can know who you are, how has that impacted your business? Yeah, I mean, everything is perceived authority, right? And just putting yourself out there on the internet with a blog and, and having your own domain name and stuff that people can go to is definitely going to boost that perceived authority. So um, it, it's all part of the ecosystem. It, it gets people to opt into your email list. It gets them reading more of your content. It gets them learning about who you are and where you've been featured. So it's very important in the grand scheme of things for to keep everything connected. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, how have you found that like with YouTube, like have you found that people that have come to your email list from YouTube and come to your site, have you found that they're kind of like pre-qualified in a way to already trust you because they have seen your videos and they have a feel that they actually trust the person that's there because they have, they have an idea of who they are? Have you noticed a difference as opposed to like another traffic platform where they may not have, may not have seen any of your videos before? Yeah, definitely. So like versus if I'm driving cold tra traffic to my webinar, you know, they're going to have to go through weeks and weeks of sequencing before they're actually warmed up to trust me enough to purchase a product from me. But with YouTube, on the other hand, I'll have people come in and watch the first webinar and boom, they buy. It's because they already know who I am. They've already, I've already built that rapport with them. You know, they know what I have to offer and I probably could send them to just a, a little sales page or even like a, a text document at that point. And they probably buy because they know what to expect from me. They trust me. And they, they just know my character. Uh, whereas someone coming from cold traffic or maybe off of a product launch, they maybe were introduced to you from an affiliate, which is still good, still warm traffic, but they still might not totally know you yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the idea of like a faceless, nameless person that's supposedly helping you online, you know, suddenly yeah. when you have a video, you're not so faceless and nameless anymore. So it's just, it kind of, I guess it's like basic psychology, right? Like you actually mm -hmm. see the person that you're that you're interacting with and say okay it's kind of like meeting him in person you know like I feel like I know him I feel like I can trust him a little bit more he's he's, he's not afraid to show himself you know? yeah exactly and, and people do really get to feel like they know you like I was in Florida and someone came up to me because they saw me um, on YouTube and they, they recognize me so people really oh, wow. get to feel like they know you yeah and they they start to you know they start to watch your videos and and you just stand out to them. So it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a really cool thing to, you know, be, be able to share your life with people and they get to know you and trust you and um, yeah, get to help people. It's great. Yeah. You're getting famous, Paul, already. <laughs> coming up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely a pretty cool experience for sure. That's great. Yeah. Um, so I guess um, at this point, um, you know, we've, we've covered a lot and I, I really thank you for, for being on. I do have one closing question. Um, do you have any closing advice to anyone who's just starting out, maybe watching this video on, you know, what route to go down and what they should be focusing on? I know you mentioned influencer marketing before, but do you have any other, I guess, like a closing statement, like a definitive closing statement? Yeah, it would be Pick your platform, number one, you know, whether that be YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, a blog, I would say a blog should probably be in it no matter what, and then pick your social media platform of choice that you're going to grow on and come up with a content schedule that you're going to stick to. You know, I would recommend, especially with YouTube, I would recommend like two to three times a week, but make sure it's something you stick with. You know, if you can do every day, that's amazing, but most people just aren't going to have that capacity. I wish I could do it, but I just can't right now. Like I just, I've tried, I get burnt out. And there's nothing worse than the burnout phase. Like I see people do these like 30 day video challenges yeah. and what ends up happening is maybe, or maybe they don't complete the challenge, but even when they do complete it, 
they end up not uploading for like a week or two because they're just so burnt out and nothing will kill the algorithm with like YouTube more than not uploading or breaking your schedule. So come up with a schedule you can stick to. Maybe it's two or three days a week and do not break it. Just force yourself to get that content out. If you can plan it ahead of time and um, have it scheduled up, that's even better because then you've got time to play with. If you know something comes up where you can't do the video, you've got one on the back burner that you can put out there. If it's an Instagram post, you've got one on the back burner already queued up, ready to go. So come up with that content schedule, stick to it, be consistent. And in the end, that's going to, you know, boost you to where you need to be and, and, you know, elevate you into the influencer world. <laughs> wow. Terrific. Well, I appreciate you sharing all that. I'm sure the audience is going to appreciate it too. So, uh, you know, again, thank you so much for coming on and I, I appreciate everything and congrats on the amazing uh, success recently and, uh, you know, absolutely smashing it. You're, you're a huge inspiration for me and I'm sure lots of other people as well. Thank you, so, Stefan, for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for coming on and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right.